Welcome aboard Yeti, a state-of-the-art liveaboard long-range explorer yacht that combines Scandinavian innovation with eco-friendly living. Designed for long-range exploring, this semi-custom vessel offers good levels of comfort, cutting-edge safety features and excellent durability. Before we begin the tour, I would appreciate it if you could hit that subscribe button. Your support enables me to continue showcasing exceptional explorer yachts like Yeti. Welcome back to the channel. I'm in Lustrecht and I'm going to show you around this Globemaster 50. This is the Globemaster 50 Long Range Explorer. Now, if you subscribe to my channel, you probably would have noticed that a couple of months ago I featured another Globemaster on my channel. That was Bohr, spelled B O R. That one's also for sale, but today I'm going to show you around this particular boat because it's got an impressive suite of additional extras on this boat that weren't on the other boat. So she's got an LOA of 15.3 meters, a beam of 4.96 meters, and a draft of just 1.2 meters. She's got an air draft of 7.2 meters, but if you need a lower air draft, then that radar mask can be retracted to bring the air draft down to 3.4 meters. She was built in 2023 here in the Netherlands. She's got a displacement of 19.5 tonnes and is a CE category A vessel. The aluminium hull that you can see there is seven millimetres thick and she's got a V-shaped fast displacement hull so she can get the speed up if you need to get somewhere quite quickly. The aluminium superstructure on this boat is also seven millimetres thick as well. And as we look around, one of the things you're probably going to notice is the deck. It's actually made of cork, uh, Marine Deck 2000, I believe it is. So it's sustainably sourced material for the deck. Anyway, let's show you around. I want to get access to the boat via the port boarding gate over here on the transom. Right, straight away, if we look around the cockpit, you see you've got a U-shaped seating area over here. And above that, you'll probably notice this. Now, you can get a lot of solar panels up here. And of course, we've also got two wind turbines as well. So already you can tell that this boat is all about self-sufficiency when it comes to power and using the maximum amount of renewable energy as possible. The tender will be stowed on these davits here. So you can quickly launch and recover the tender when you want to use it. Okay, let's head over onto the port side and head forward via the port side deck. You see lots of space here. You're not having to pivot or twist to get access up onto the bow. And there's plenty to grab onto as you make your way around the upper deck as well. You can see these steps on the superstructure that lead up to the flybridge. So yes, this boat does actually have a flybridge as well. And here we have the tender stowed off there on the port side. This tender is actually the Talamax 310 silver line. So a nice sporty tender there as well. As we pan forward, I'll give you a better view of that radar mast. As I say, it is retractable as well. So if you do need to lower that mast to bring down your air draft, then you can do that. Let's step up here so I can show you around here quickly. Obviously you've got one hand on the camera, one hand on the crab rails, but there we go. I love the fact you've got the little H there as well. So obviously you're not gonna be landing a helicopter there but you can land your drone. What a great place to aim for when you're flying. Up, for, up here from this vantage point as well, you get a good view of just how many solar panels you can fit on that aft section there. Four high efficiency sun power solar panels, each producing 400 watts and two silent wind generators together help to provide sustainable energy to support long range, autonomous and eco-friendly cruising. We spin around and face forward. Here we've got the controls here. Though, like I say, this is a flybridge, got controls for the bow and the stern thruster. Simrad display here. Display also for the Volvo Penta engine as well as the throttle control lever over there on the right hand side and the Simrad control for the rudder. But yeah, you get a nice view up here as you obviously would with a flybridge. But if I just look around, I'm sure by now you've guessed where I am. This is boating heaven for people like me. Also, I did feature this boat as well, this uh, barge, Noel. If you haven't checked out that video yet, then make sure you do. 
Uh, I'll leave a link in the video description for that. But yeah, that is a beautiful boat as well. Anyway, I digress. Back to the Globemaster. Let's head over here onto the port side and climb back down. I've really got to watch my footing here because I do not want to fall. Although I'm sure it'll create a viral moment. I don't think my wife and kids will be happy. One of the things you notice from this vantage point here is obviously the size of that window. You probably guessed it by now, you're gonna get lots of natural lights in the interior spaces here, thanks to these big windows dotted all around the superstructure. I love that name as well, Yeti. Okay, let's head forward past the wheelhouse. We'll look in there in a second and onto the bow. So this boat does have a Rockner 40 kg oversized anchor. Uh, it does come with 100 meters of chain as well. And that is deployed and recovered thanks to an electric Maxwell windlass. As we pan around now and face aft, you get a good view of the windows on that wheelhouse there and a little seating area and lots of skylights up here as well. Again, making sure you've got lots of natural light coming down into the living areas. It's worth pointing out as well that the hand round this boat is aluminium. So as you're walking around, you've got plenty to grab onto. And if we look atop the coach roof there, big old searchlight and some horns over there on the port side. And yet again, another view of the radar mast. Here on the radar mast, we have the Simrad Halo 24 radar, a Simrad GPS and two 4G antennas for extra long range connectivity. Okay, let's head aft. As you probably noticed on the starboard side of the wheelhouse, got an access door so you can get quick access out onto the starboard side deck when you're coming alongside or throwing the lines. Step down these four steps, back down towards the cockpit and check out these big sturdy bulwarks. Look at those. And look, there's the starboard access gate into the cockpit as well. Later on in the video, I will of course show the clever design when it comes to getting access to the engine bay. So make sure you stay tuned. Over here on the starboard side, we have a docking helm station. So again, you've got the controls for the Volvo Penta engines, a Simrad rudder control there, and obviously the bow and stern side power thrusters there, and the displays for the Volvo Penta engines. Walking into the saloon, you'll notice we've got quite a decent threshold on that door. And talking of doors, check out that. I mean, that is seriously over-engineered. You're not going to be getting any water coming through there when that is shut. A big old window over there as well, look into the saloon. So again, lots of natural light coming in there. And let's step in. Okay, slight step up. And over on the port side, got an L-shaped seating area. Obviously the vents over there as well. So the boat does have a 13.5 kW Cabola heating system as well. It does have floor heating on this boat, which uh, quite surprised me. I didn't think it would have, but it does. And of course it does have air conditioning as well. But let's talk a little bit about the layout. As I say, over here on the port side, you've got an L-shaped seating area with a table there. So you're a good place to sit down and eat some scran while enjoying the view. Over here on the starboard side, the old fridge. Let's have a look inside, remove that clip. And there we go, look, plenty of cold storage in there. And shut that back up. Nice little touch that ensures that the fridge doesn't pop open whilst you're on the way. Over here on the starboard side, obviously we've got the galley. It does have over 3.5 meters of workspace. As you can probably tell, we've got a Corian countertop on here and we do have the fiddle rails as well, which is really important. Obviously if when you're underway and things are getting a little bit bumpy out there. Stainless steel sink over here. The galley does have an induction cooker uh, with a four burner that is actually on a gimbal hinge as well, which is, again, a really nice touch for the rough weather conditions there. In terms of freezer space, we've got an Etna 70 litre freezer as well. And here you'll notice we've got a Seaman dishwasher. So yeah, very functional galley, all the stuff you need, obviously for those decent meals you're gonna be wanting to cook up as you're powering through those cold climates. And look up there, we've got the helm station. We'll check that out in a minute. First, I'm gonna show you the guest accommodation. Now, if you have already seen my other Globemaster video, you're gonna know that the accommodation is split almost as if you were on a catamaran. Uh, you've got the port accommodation down there and you've got starboard accommodation down there, but obviously it's not a multi-hole we're on. This is a single hull. So let's head down first onto the port accommodation. 
down these steps. And here we have obviously the toilet and the sink, a porthole over there that can be opened up so you can get some fresh air in here and another one up there. If you're wondering where the bed is, well, we have to turn 180 degrees, face aft and bend down. And here we have a double berth here. Nice and cozy tucked away in there. I bet you'd feel nice and secure when you're rolling through the big bumpy stuff. That's for sure, you're not gonna be rolling out of bed. But yeah, I really like it. Like I say, it's a nice, cozy feel. Now these stairs can be lifted up as well, so you've got some additional storage under there. I'm not gonna lift it because I've got one hand and I'll probably make a fluff up of it. So instead, I'm gonna head over here onto the starboard side and show you the starboard guest accommodation. If we lower it down here, you can see obviously it's being used as a bit of a storage space at the moment. But look, over there we've got a window that actually leads into the port accommodation. So a nice touch, but a really decent sized bed in here. The port accommodation doesn't have its own shower. If you're in that side and you want to have a shower, you'll be coming over onto the starboard side or using the owner's shower if he or she will let you. I like the fact we've got a little seat over here, somewhere to perch up. Have your morning dose of caffeine before your day gets underway. And if I stand up, again, look, we've got a porthole there that can be opened up. And a further two portholes over there as well. Okay, let's continue into the ensuite. Decent sized shower there. No rain head, but doesn't matter. You wouldn't expect a rain head on every boat you go on to. Heated towel rail there. Mirror and sink with some storage underneath. Let's spin around. Again, look, one of the things that I like about this boat is literally the maximum use of available space. You've got some more storage under there that you can lift up on that little step and you've got lots of storage space in this cabinetry as well. So yeah, plenty of areas to keep all of your gear. Okay, let's head up into this raised seating area up here. L-shaped seating on the starboard side and L-shaped seating over here on the port side as well. So if I come over here and sit down, get my breath back. This is actually the fourth boat tour I've done today. So yeah, I'm gonna need a coffee quite soon. Let's just sit down and take it all in. Just pan around, look. As you can see, you've got plenty of headroom in here, loads and loads of headroom. But yeah, if I sit here, look, you can imagine your fellow sailors sat over there on the starboard side whilst the skipper is taking care of business up there. Talking of taking care of business, let me show you up onto the helm station actually before we go into the forward owner's cabin. I like the fact over here on the port side you've got a table space for your traditional charts uh, if that's what you want. And look, as you can see we've got all of the Simrad gear over here, throttle control levers over there on the port side, wiper control, Simrad VHF, multi-function displays there, two of them. And then over here on the starboard side, we've got all of our switches, all the engine fans, bilge pumps, search lights, anchor lights, nav lights, engine room lights. Literally all the lights that you need are right there, just an arm's length away. By the way, if you need yacht management software, then Aquator Marine offers an intuitive platform designed to streamline boat operations, from project planning to crew management. This software ensures everything runs smoothly on board, allowing you to focus on enjoying the journey. For more details, I'll leave a link pinned in the comments and in the video description. And look, this is obviously the captain's chair here amidships. And to the right of him or her, you've got the tiller control lever there and the bow and stern thruster. And look, really nice little navigator's chair over here on the starboard side as well. And obviously from this vantage point, we see the inside of the door that leads out onto the starboard deck. Handle up there on the overhead for the searchlight. And look, we've got three skylights here. So again, lots of fresh air coming in here, lots of natural light. Yeah, really nice space. Again, if you have seen the video that I made about the other Globemaster bore, then check it out if you haven't. But if you have, let me know what you think of the comparison between bore and this one. And let me know what you noticed in terms of the difference between the two boats as well. Right, as we descend down into the owner's cabin forward, I love the fact we've got this chair here. It's like a commander's chair. 
yeah, great place to sit and probably set up your laptop on there, catch up with your emails or whatever you need to catch up on. And look behind that, we've got the controls for the Cummins Onan generator there. Okay, spin around. Again, really big portholes, so you're not gonna be short of natural light down here. Another porthole up there on that bulkhead and one over there on the starboard side. Got this raised bed as well with lots of cabinetry on either side, so you're gonna be able to find plenty of areas to keep all of your stuff. And look, we've got some drawers underneath the bed as well, so even more storage space for you. I would honestly find it hard to fill up a boat like this with my own stuff. I really am used to traveling light. But anyway, let's go into the starboard ensuite over here with the owner's cabin. And then we have the shower over there. Nice decent size shower there. Obviously got the toilet and a heated towel rail there. But yeah, again, plenty of headroom in here. Nice and light and airy thanks to the big window. And look, we've got another window on that bulkhead there, look, just so you can look out. But yeah, it's touches like that. It makes you feel like you're on a much larger boat. I'm not gonna open up the cupboards because I'm sure you can imagine the depth of the cupboards. When you look at the angle of the hull there, you'll be able to work out roughly how much space you've got to play with there. Right, let's spin around back into the owner's cabin. One last look around here. Spin around 180 degrees, back up one step, and then back up these four steps. In fact, I've not had a look behind here yet, but look, even more storage space in there and more storage space in there with some flares. Okay, let's shut that. Come back up the steps. A little look around here. Obviously you can close that and you can close that as well. So it's all flush, but that's how you access down into the port and starboard accommodation. One final look around the wheelhouse. There we spin around. What I'm going to do now is take you back out into the cockpit and show you the engine bays. In the engine bay we find a single Volvo Penta engine with 340 horsepower, delivering a maximum speed of 12 knots and a comfortable cruising speed of 9 knots. This engine has just 200 hours on it. Additionally, the boat is equipped with a Cummings Onan 7KW wet exhaust generator. When it comes to her range at a cruising speed of about 8.8 .8 knots, Yeti can cover approximately 2,200 to 2,500 nautical miles. Slowing down to around 5.5 knots extends the range to an impressive 6,000 nautical miles, while at 6.5 knots she can reach 3,000 nautical miles. For the longest transatlantic passage between the Azores and Bermuda, which is around 1,675 nautical miles, maintaining 8.5 knots would easily do the job. Let's highlight some of Yeti's features. The boat is equipped with fixed interceptor stabilizers and trim tabs of changeable size. The water maker provides a reliable fresh water supply and the engine room boasts 45 millimeters of insulation for sound and temperature control. The ice going anti-foul bottom paint is a significant breakthrough offering lifetime performance and of course protection. For safety, Yeti includes watertight bulkheads, securely placed outlets above the waterline and doubled emergency pumps at every station. The lightweight aluminium hull boasts range and efficiency, reducing fuel consumption and operating costs. With transatlantic capability, Yeti can easily reach destinations with more favorable fueling costs. And of course, the semi-displacement hull design offers excellent stability and sea keeping ability, which is crucial for extended voyages in open seas. The aluminium construction combined with full internal insulation dampens vibration and noise, making for a more comfortable and enjoyable journey. Here you can see Bohr, the other Glowmaster 50 that is currently listed for sale with Devault Yacht Brokers. Remember to see that video that I made about that particular Globemaster, then head to the link pinned in the comments. As mentioned, Yeti is currently listed for sale with my friends over at Devork Yacht Brokers. And if you want to find out more, then head to my website 
You know where to find the link either in the video description and I'll pin one in the video comments as well. If you love aluminium explorer yachts then be sure to check out the video that I made about the Arxon 85. And you'll also enjoy the video that I made about the Archipelago 47. Again you'll find the link for both videos in the video description. If you've got access to a boat you'd like me to feature on my channel or if you're looking for a boat to charter regardless of the size of the boat, your budget and where in the world you want to go then be sure to reach out to me. Also feel free to contact me if you're looking for a boat to buy or if you've got a boat that you want to sell. You'll find all of the relevant details once again via the link that I'll leave in the video description and via the link that I'll leave in, in the comments. Thank you.